Good morning everybody, I am Sarah with the trains and I'm here at Norwich Station ready for another railway adventure as I head off on the long route to Kings Lynn. Now I mentioned it was a long route to Kings Lynn and that's because it is. Even though Norwich and Kingsland are both in Norfolk, I've got to go via Cambridgeshire to get there. Historically speaking though, we could have got there a lot more directly. Historically, you could have hopped on a train at Norwich City Station to take you up to South Lynn, which had opened in 1886. From there, a shuttle service operated up to 20 times a day to take passengers to Kings Lynn Station. Unfortunately, passenger services ceased on the line in 1959 and ultimately Norwich City, South Lynn and all the other stations on that line would close. That's why today I'm having to take a much less direct route. We will be calling at Wyndham, Attleborough, Thetford, Brandon, Ely, Cambridge North, Cambridge, Whittlesford Parkway, Audley End and Stansted Airport. In order to get to Kings Lynn, I'm changing at Ely. The station was opened in 1845 by the Eastern Counties Railway. Its three platforms were originally linked by a wooden footbridge to the south of the station buildings, but by 1902 this had been replaced by a brick footbridge at the north end of the station. Neither of these footbridges survives, however and by 1925 the subway that we still use today had been constructed. Because the platforms are connected in this way, you're advised to allow yourself a couple of minutes to get to the appropriate platform so that you don't miss your train. In the 1920s there were carriage sidings to the east, an engine shed and goods yard to the south, and a level crossing to the north of the station. The station was rebuilt by the LNER in 1929 to 1930 in a similar style to the original. In November 2018, the level crossing at the north of the station was closed to road traffic following the opening of the Ely Bypass. These days, the station is served by Great Northern, Cross Country, Greater Anglia and East Midlands Railway. In terms of station facilities, there's three platforms, the subway, a shop, a cafe, ticket office, many, many plastic bins, and toilets aplenty. Unfortunately, I did have something bittersweet happen to me at Ely Station. Okay, so as a train spotter, I admit I do have a favourite train. It is 755412. I refer to her as my bi-mode babe. Been looking for her for months and I just saw her out of the window <laughs> going through the station as I was about to get off and I didn't have my camera looking out the window. <laughs> that is just my luck. <laughs> but now it's time for me to get on board a class 387 and head off to Littleport, my first stop on the Fen Line.
Welcome aboard this service to Kings Lynn. The next station is Littleport. Okay, so we are now here at our first station we're hopping off at on the way to Kings Lynn, which is Littleport. Let's have a quick run round and a rundown of the station features. We have information signs. We have a bench. We have a short platform. There was an announcement on the train um, that we were to get off from only the front four coaches and I was in coach four. On platform two we have got the little uh, bus shelter style waiting area. We have got some more benches, even more benches. We've got some more information signs. The way out sign. A lovely bright and shiny dot matrix. And what do we have here if it isn't another couple of bus shelters? Over on platform one, we have got a full blown enclosed waiting room, as well as the usual benches, dot matrix and the information signs as over here oh 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 another feature i've noticed it's on both platforms it's a grip bin it's locked and of course we have the ramp for um wheelchair access to the trains and uh, as you may have noticed there is a mind the step sign on the platform because it is a little bit of a jump down uh, from the train to the platform as you may have noticed from the signage, this is a Great Northern station, which makes a change because usually the stations I visit up until this point have been Greater Anglia. We have, of course, the help point, the smart card thingy, and lots of flappy plastic bins as well. Now, as for access to the station, you have a choice of steps or ramp and I think the ramp over here is the one I'm going to go for because it is a bit of a cold bit of a frosty day now outside the station platforms we have got ticket machine cycle parking and station car park and this sign informs me that to get to platform one for trains to Ely, Cambridge and London I've got to go via an underpass. Ooh, let's go try that out. This, uh, there's an announcement there's something coming through platform two we got to get back to platform two, platform two, I want to see what this is. What is it going to be?
Oh, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm really excited. Um, oh, oh, I think it's a 66. Is it a 66? Let's see find out. It is indeed 66726 GB Rail Freight. Oh my lord, how long is this? I was really hoping I'd get to see some freight today and to get that so early on because it's 10.22 is just mwah. Time to venture into the underpass Now outside platform 2 we have more cycle storage an Amazon locker a defibrillate a defibril a defibrillator I've actually been trained in how to use one of those and I can't bloody say it so the presence of that underpass that vehicles can't go through and ramps on both sides of the station mean that this station is level access without having to cross a road which is very very useful Although, of course, as I did mention, in spite of all the level access at the station, there is the gap between the train and the platform because the platform isn't high enough to line up with the train. So, as you can see over there, we do have a level crossing that is uh, manually opened and closed gates um, and we do have a signal box as well. Oh, it does seem there is also an induction loop at uh, this station for people who use hearing aids. Excellent. Okay, so there is a room here. It is locked, so I don't really know what it is. And here is the indoor sheltered waiting area, of course. There's a flappy plastic bin. Should have known it, should have known it. Okay, so we are now off on a quest to find the river Ooze. Ooze. That's a great name for a river. I think I'm right in saying it actually means river river. I'm 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 really regretting wearing the shoes I'm wearing. I'll, let me show you. This is the footpath. These are my shoes. Should have worn boot, proper boots or wellies. Never mind. So that muddy public footpath that I was walking down to get to the river because it was signposted river. Um is dead end it so soon turns into uh, private so we're not giving up we're gonna have a little walk and see if we can still get a good glimpse of the ooze to find but ain't she a beaut I'm just gonna take a second to do something I haven't actually done before and that is to thank my generous donors on Ko-fi uh, because I've started one of those pages now um, to support my um, 
train adventures and they have made this trip to Kings Lynn possible today. Special thanks to Ian and Lisa who are my Kofi donors at the time of recording. And with that, it's time to head back to the station so that I don't miss my next train because they're one every hour. We are hopping aboard 387103. We are now here at Downham Market, the next stop on our way to Kings Lynn and uh, there's something about the decor here that uh, I want to show you because it's a little bit different to everywhere else. So I'm sure you can see all the lamp posts are red but as we pan over to the station sign, what is this? The station has actually been restored to a um, appearance from the Network Southeast days from the late 1980s, which means the style of the decor here is uh, older than me. Downham Market Station was opened in 1846 by the Lynn and Ely Railway. The original station building is still in use and has been awarded Grade 2 listed status. The signal box you can see here was built for the Great Eastern Railway in 1881 and was also awarded Grade 2 listed status in 2013. Now, without further ado, let's do the usual thing and examine the station facilities. We've got a bright red bench with a, 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 a lager can. Um, I don't think that's an official part of the station though. We have got a nice little raised flower bed with a energy drink can again don't think that's part of the station uh, accessibility ramp for the trains we have got a grit bin another one of these lovely benches and a red waiting shelter not like the blue ones at Littleport oh it's a perchy one I, I, I don't like the perch seats not very comfortable Ooh, we have fully enclosed waiting room. Ooh, I like the decorations in here. Oh, and complete with departure screen. There is even an original little fireplace. That's great. To, to, to be honest, we could do with a fire today. It's freezing. Another key feature at Downham Market is there are toilets over on platform one. We also have a smart card reader thingy. And here we have the outwards ramp. So this way is the car park. And if we turn around and go this way, this will take us to the access to the other platform. So the level access is uh, going across the level crossing. And we also have another car park. Over on this side there is cycle storage, post box and do my eyes deceive me? A phone box? Does the phone work? It's been decades since I used one. I've got no idea if it's supposed to have dial tone or not. So uh, let's guess it does. So my original intention had been to go on a little wander around Downer Market, but I am actually quite cold. So I think I'm just gonna go and get a hot drink in the station cafe. We have now arrived at Watlington, our penultimate station stop on the way to Kings Lynn. 
Now it would seem that the la old lady's waiting room is now in fact an Airbnb and you can stay there if that's something you're interested in. Now let's have a quick rundown of the history of Watlington Station. It was opened in 1846 by the Lynn and Ely Railway. Um, in 1848 it became a junction station when there was a branch line to Wisbeach opened. Um, in 1875 it got renamed to Magdalen Road. Now in 1968 the branch to Wisbeach got closed and consequently Watlington, or as it was known at the time, Magdalen Road, was also closed. But thanks to local campaigners, the station was reopened, still called Magdalen Road, in 1975. It was then eventually returned to its original name of Watlington in 1989, and the name has remained to this day. However, the sign on the signal box still says Magdalen Road. The original station buildings are now in fact a private residence and as I've already mentioned the ladies waiting room is now an Airbnb. By way of station features there is not a lot here, it is an unstaffed station. You can see some benches, a dot matrix. On this platform we've got a lovely waiting shelter and also a smart card reader and a help point. Out here is the car park which has over there an Amazon box and also a lot of cycle storage. You have got the onwards travel information and general information about the station. In terms of access to the other platform which is a bit further down behind the signal box um, it is across the level crossing so you do have to go onto the road to get to it. Over on the southbound platform we've got a ticket machine, a deep fibrillator, some information signs and this also includes um, London rail and tube services very handily because the trains from here do go all the way down to King's Cross. Not gonna lie, this waiting shelter on the southbound platform is dirty and um, the smell and I don't even want to think about what that puddle might be to be perfectly honest. So I'm gonna get out of here. Now over here on platform two there is this ramshackle little building which must have been some kind of station building but I actually don't know what it is. Obviously it is long disused. Now there are these little signs for the 720s. Um, that is because occasionally there are Greater Anglia services operating on this line. There is nothing quite like the sound of a level crossing alarm. One little observation about the 387s, um, I really like them, I think they're great, but if you are travelling on them for any length of time and think you might want to charge something, they have got only the three pin sockets, they haven't got USB ports, or certainly these ones on the Great Northern don't. Um, so be aware of that, because I haven't bought a 
three pin adapter thing for my USB chargers. Um, so it's a good job I carry spare batteries. There is something else about the Class 387s that I really like though. And amazingly, it's not the moquette. Although I do think I'm yet to meet a moquette that I don't like. It's actually this little heating panel. There's the heater down by your feet, but there's this panel up at hand height as well, which was really great for warming my hands up today. Our final stop of the day, Kings Lynn, opened in 1846. Originally, it was just known as Lynn. The original timber station building at Kings Lynn was replaced in 1871-72, and it was then later extended in 1910. In 1911, Lynn changed to Kings Lynn. It opened as a junction station, as there was also a line to Narborough opening on the day that the Lynn and Ely Railway opened the line as far as Downham Market. A line to Hunstanton was opened in 1862, but this sadly closed to passengers in 1969, although there is a campaign to restore this line. As I mentioned earlier, there was a shuttle service between Kings Lynn and South Lynn, meaning that passengers from Norwich had rail access to Kings Lynn Station. Other closures at Kings Lynn include the line to Deerham, which closed in 1968, the branch that went to the harbour that closed in the 1990s, as well as the branch to the docks. The goods yard has been taken over by the car park and shops. These days, Kings Lynn is primarily served by Great Northern Class 387s travelling to London Kings Cross. On weekdays at peak times, Greater Anglia do also serve this station, with their Class 720s travelling to London, Liverpool Street. Now that I've reached Kings Lynn and been around the station, I've decided to come and visit Greyfriars Tower, which is on the site of a medieval Franciscan friary that stood here until the 16th century. This is really cool. This is like a recreation of what the friary would have looked like. So as lovely as it is here at Greyfriars Tower, I am extremely hungry. So I'm going to go and deal with that and have a little wander around Kings Lynn before we head back to Norwich. So I am back at the Kings Lynn station ready to take the long route back to Norwich. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who subscribes, donates to me on Ko-fi. See you all next time. Bye.